Grand Central Dispatch, or GCD, is a technology designed to let programmers easily harness the power of multi-core processors. GCD hides the details of creating, managing, and destroying POSIX threads from the programmer by maintaining a thread pool. MacRuby is the first Ruby implementation which interfaces with GCD. Let's see in the next IRB session how you can easily distribute a block of Ruby code on multiple cores. First, let's create a queue. We'll create just one for our example, but you can create many. The queue is uniquely identified by the string used as an argument. We're going to fake some computationally intensive job by sleeping for three seconds in a block. As you can see, the block is executed synchronously. So now we wait around three seconds as expected, nothing surprising here. Now we ask the queue to execute the block asynchronously. As you can now see, the queue returns immediately, but the results are coming back after three seconds. Our block is executing on the second core, while the first is available for the main thread to move forward. We can execute the task and also attach the task to a specific group. A group is an identifier that you can use to group multiple tasks together under the same name. You can use group to wait until all the background tasks belonging to that group are executed. So for example, this executes as before, attached to the group we just created. But if you want, you can do it again and wait. As you can see, now we blocked waiting for our task to end. This is also a longer 10 second sleep. Why is this useful? Because you can go ahead with the main computation thread, but maybe at some point you need to wait for the background task and synchronize with the main flow of the application. So let's put our knowledge in practice by creating a parallel map method for arrays. The best way to describe hot cocoa is to see it in action. Once installed, it's available from the command line. Run hot cocoa, the name of the project, Shortify in our case, to create a fully working project with support files and a rake script. If you print the directory structure, you'll see that a bunch of files and folders have been created. I'll use vi to dig into these. Open the directory tree. There are config, lib, and resources folders. The rake file imports a few default hot cocoa tasks that you can use. For example, the default task here is using the run task from the hot cocoa task library. You can add your custom tasks in this file if you want. Inside the config folder, a YAML configuration file is used to determine how the application should be built. For example, the name of the final bundle, which sources are loaded into the bundle, version, and main Ruby file to start the application. The application source files are in the lib directory. Application.rb was created as part of the project and contains a basic skeleton to build a window and start the Coco main application loop. The start method defines the appearance of the window and includes a label to print hello on the screen. The menu.rb file contains the menu structure that will appear in the menu bar. Customize your menus here. And finally, resources. Right now it just contains the application's icon. This is the place to store all files that should be in the bundle at runtime but are not actually source code. Let's use MacRake to invoke a few tasks on our shiny new application. For example, MacRake build will create the shortify.app application file. MacRake run will start the application just created. The window you see here is a standard map application with a few events already managed for you. Like for example, pushing on the red button will close the application as expected. Now if we go to the project folder, you'll see that MacRake run is just starting the app file that was created locally. You can move this app file to the application folder as with any other Mac application to install it. Without following a specific order, I'll start by creating the controller connected to the main and only view of the application. We need two input-output attributes as instance variables to connect the text input field to the output label on the view. 
We also need a shortify action method that will be fired on a button click. Now I'm going to change the start method to create the layout we want for the main window. This is where I'm going to use the Hot Cocoa DSL-ish library to describe the UI. We can get rid of the label. We'll keep the main window frame proportions instead. The coordinates of the internal widgets in the window can be absolute and you can define a frame with four coordinates for each of them, or you can use a layout view and let Hot Cocoa do the placement for you. Use the layout view everywhere you can to avoid serious headaches placing elements on the window. I've prepared a code snippet for layout view. We can see a few